All right, Trey Young had a pretty good season last year. Fourth in scoring, second in assist, and a lot of optimism about this Hawks squad down here in the A now. They started the season up in Chicago, and Trey was straight serving dudes all over the court. Zach Levine had a little taste there. That's a three from deep. I mean, Trey looking at the defense like, who up next? Uh, you up next. A little diss there to John Collins who missed the three, but check out Trey chase it down, and then that's wide open, and that's a bucket. Come on. Saves it, square up, too good. They were up 71-46 at that point. Now watch this. Trey, fakes right, drains a three over Kobe White. It's a 29-point advantage for Atlanta. Trey goes for 37 points, seven assists in 26 minutes. Mm. He only missed two shots, and he was five of six from three-point range. Hawks win it by 20. Trey, not only did he become the second player in NBA history with 35 points on 80% field goal percentage in a season opener, but according to Elias, his 37 points were the most points on 12 or fewer field goal attempts in a game since the shot clock came to be. He still doesn't look like he's wearing it out in the weight room. No, no. Due to time constraints, we can't show you. In the draft, out of George, an NBA player for real now because he's got a regular season game in the books, and he's eventually going to get in the scorebook. Took a while, less than five to go on the first. Ball movement moved around. There it is, Edwards' first NBA bucket. Thank you very little. Timberwolves down 21-14. Less than a minute to go. Edwards again. Drives. Misses. There you go. Stay with it. Quick. Quick jump, T-Wolves, 22-16, they're down. Early second, they're down 13. Edwards, nice one-on-one -on -one move, spins inside, gets that one to go ahead. 25 minutes of burn, 15 points, good debut. Timberwolves down 11 at that point. Into the fourth quarter, making a game of it. Uh, Ricky Rubio's back, out in the desert. Just went over to Carl Anthony Towns, who buries that. They were down two. Now they're up one after the big cat hit it. Timberwolves, again, trailed by a point, two to go. Towns. Listen, I don't need a ball hog. I got a guy who can make it. D'Angelo Russell for three, so now it's a two-point cushion. Still up two, coming down. Towns driving. Does he take it? No, kicks it out. Malik Beasley's got it. Towns and Russell, 40 points, 11 assists combined. Timberwolves win at 111-101. Carl Anthony Towns, more than just a season opener here. Being honest, when you go through what I've been through, you just find a different source of strength. I don't know how to explain it, but... I, I, I made a promise to these guys to be here for them. And uh, no matter how bad my situation is and how up my life is, you know, I'm going to keep being here for these guys, regardless, regardless what it is. And I'm going to let them see me smile, even though inside I'm not smiling whatsoever. Um, I owe that to these guys as a leader. I owe that to them as a teammate. Um, I just want to be here for them. And, uh, off the court when we're not on that court practicing or playing this game. I want to be there for them uh, in their lives. And, you know, when I have time for myself, I'll be there with my family. You saw it written there, say it out loud. Towns playing for the first time since his mother passed away from COVID-19. Took the ball, going to send that to his dad. Since entering the league in 2015, Anthony Towns has been one of the most dominating big men in the game. Throw in tonight, because we should. Towns 180 games with 20 and 10 points and rebounds since 2015. Most by any player in the league. That's five ahead of Anthony Davis and 20 more than Giannis. All right, so Carl Anthony Towns playing with the number one pick. He was the number one pick. Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, the number two pick from this year's draft, making his regular season debut with the Hornets. And in the preseason, like, LaMelo was a top 10 play waiting to happen. And this one, though, just couldn't get it to go. Like, literally nothing was working for his game. Now, granted, he doesn't start. He comes off the bench for the Hornets. Missed the shot there. And then deep three. That's off the mark as well. Ended up finishing with zero points on zero for five shooting. He had three turnovers. First top five pick in the draft to go at least 0 for 5 from the floor in their season debut since 2013. Cass. Cavs, pardon me, not the Cavs, those are the Cavs, uh, led yeah. by 21 at the break. But Terry Rozier, he starts at point guard for the Hornets. Uh, he went off in the second half. He had six in the first two quarters. He finished with 42. He made 10 threes, tied for the most threes made in an NBA season opener. But it didn't matter because 
the Cavs just had too much going for him. Colin Sexton was part of that with 27 points. And Cleveland wins it at home to open the season 121-114. All right, so more on Melo going scoreless. Uh, he had as many turnovers as he did assists as he finished with zero points. He's the fourth top three pick in the last 15 seasons to finish their NBA debut without scoring a single point. The other three, Otto Porter Jr., Hashim Thabit, Grizzly fans still mad about that draft pick, and Greg Oden. I bet he scores for the end of the year. I bet he does. All right, night two of the NBA. Other teammates of his and, you know, players like John Wall and Boogie Cousins who were with Martin when they were just simply getting haircuts the other night, uh, they'll need to continue to test negative. But, you know, the Rockets didn't have eight players to play the Thunder tonight. They'll need eight players to get on the plane and go to Portland and try to play the Blazers on Saturday. So this is a way too early COVID issue for the league. I mean, it's night two. They pulled off the bubble, but teams are traveling now. And one would imagine this isn't going to be an isolated incident. What's the league laid out to handle these kind of disruptions? Well, I, I think for the league, and you talk to other teams today, and you know they know that probably their time is coming with these kinds of instances within their organizations. And you know it was a confluence of events that led the Rockets to be in a position where they didn't have enough players to play. And I think for organizations, it's the concern of an outbreak of multiple players, players testing positive and and the concern among teams and the league is now that teams start to get on the road in a more in a more frequent way you know and as teams will tell you we're only going to be as strong as our weakest link among among players and staff on the road and the hope is that you know players don't contract the virus when they're away from home there's protocols in place for teams when they're away from home but the league knows that they're going to have players test positive they're probably going to lose more games. This is the reality of, uh, mm-hmm. of conducting a professional uh, or a college sports league uh, outside of a bubble. And now for the NBA, as they start a season outside the bubble, you know this what happened with the Rockets today uh, is probably going to happen to more teams. And uh, there's an acceptance of that around the league. Hey, you touch it every day, every week going forward is a bit of a mystery. Woj, thanks. Uh, we're, we know thanks, more John. now because we've talked to you and we appreciate it. Thanks. 